What's going on everybody? We are back on site. That is my homestead. I'm getting ready to knock out some more of this uh, garage addition. Today I think, what are we doing? Today we're doing some sheathing. We're doing some fascia. We're doing some overhangs. We got all kinds of stuff lined up. So let's get at it. Another thing I want to do is I got these Power Pro Engineered Performance Structural Lag Screws, six inches. Uh, is I'm gonna put some of these up into uh, up into the girder from my uh, posts. So I got my Dewalt 20 volt with the big brick on it. Gonna give me some power. It comes with its own bit here. So let's see how this is gonna work. So what I think I'm gonna do is I want to make sure that I'm tying the post up into the girder there. So I'll probably just go like this. I could probably go on the inside. That way you wouldn't see it. Let's try that. Let's go on this side. And we're just gonna shoot this up into it, make it like a hurricane tie, just so there's no uplift. Uh, I'll go center here. Wow. Get my angle going on. Oh, come on. There we go. There we go. You can see in the time lapse there, I added some extra screws into the joist just to hold in there. I actually shot one up from underneath to hold up in there, but I'm getting super low on screws. So I'm thinking I probably don't need these uh, supports anymore. Uh, what do you call them? Why am I having a blank? Um, what are they called? Um, I don't even know. Anyways, <laughs> I don't need these anymore. I need some more screws. So I'm going to take all these out. Is that I think I'm going to put one of these bad boys in here because not only will it hold the joist down, it'll hold my band board down to the house. So I'm just going to hit this home right here. I think that's good. I don't think that's going anywhere now. I think that's pretty secure. She's looking great. So let's see what's next. I need to start thinking about the overhangs. Yeah, I do need to put this band board underneath here still, but I'm gonna wait for Steph so she can help me hold that up in there uh, cause it's gonna be impossible to do by myself. So let me start working on these overhangs. For these overhangs, what we're gonna do is we're going to do 16 inches. Now, I'm not gonna do 16 inches this way. I'm gonna do 16 inches this way. So I'm gonna take perpendicular to my posts like so get that pretty much level and then I'm going to make a mark here at 16 right there and then what I'm going to do is I could do that same number I could do that 11 degrees up or what I'll do is I'll just take my plumb stick here and I'll just plumb up that looks pretty good score a mark and then I'll cut that Oh, come on dead battery but then you get the gist that's what I'm gonna do and then the fascia board will go on top of that so. hey babe hey. how's it going Good. How's it going with you? oh dead battery hey I'm gonna need your help in a second you don't really look dressed for work no. <laughs> job number two Oh yeah, Stephanie Ellis, 
Uh, she doesn't work enough, so she's actually getting a second job. Go me uh, at Walgreens. So she's going to work part time at the pharmacy in Walgreens around uh, the Swain and Jackson counties. Western North Carolina. Western region. North Carolina region. Yeah. So she's not busy enough. So she wants to be busier and uh, make more money. Can you give me a couple of hours? Yeah. To get some stuff done, and then I can come out and help you. Okay. Deal. Deal. I made all my marks on this side, on the right side of the board, thinking that when I was up there, I could cut it with my right hand. But the problem is, is that my saw is backwards, I guess, or not backwards, but it cuts on one side or the other. And so when I do that, I can't see my line. So I'm going to have to cut it left-handed which means that all my marks are on the wrong side, which means I need to redo everything I just did on the other side. Yes. So I know some of you are probably thinking, why didn't he just cut it from the bottom? Wouldn't that have been easier? Uh, and it would have been a lot easier. That Dewalt saw, that ain't a little boy saw, man. That thing's got some muscle to it. It's heavy. Uh, but the problem is, is if you cut it from the bottom, it pinches. And I couldn't hold it and cut it and do all that by myself. So it was just easier to get up on top and just zing, 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 zing uh, from the top. But uh, yeah, it looks good. Let me get my hand out of the way here. Uh, yeah, it looks good. They all look pretty straight. I don't think my saw, I don't know if it cuts square. I think those may be a little bit turned. But once the fudge is on the face of there, uh, um, it'll all be great. So uh, next I need to worry about, I need to think about these outriggers here. So what I'm going to do is this fascia board is going to run long out here somewhere. And then this fascia board is going to run like this and butt into that and tie in and then i'll put little outriggers uh two foot on center so uh, i think the plan is to do a foot overhang so i got an inch and a half material of my two by six so i need to cut a bunch of ten and a halves right ten and a half plus inch and a half is 12 inches that'll be my overhang uh total overhang 12 inches so uh let me take all these scraps Oh, those are two by eight. Oh, I bought two by six. I bought some two by six just for this. So let me figure out how many I need and I'll cut a bunch of 10 and a halfs and start putting those in. All right, I got my blocks here cut up. And again, I don't know which way I'm gonna lay out this roof with my sheathing. I don't know if they're gonna go long ways this way, eight foot or long ways this way. I'm gonna have to figure out which way works best, but either way, I still wanna put these on layout of two foot, just like my joys. So what I'll do is I'm going to pull a number, but again, remember this is going to have a fascia board out like this, which is not on there yet. So before I put that on there, I'm gonna to wanna to burn an inch and a half. So if I burn an inch and a half, I can put my mark. Remember this is 24 on center. So I wanna be three quarters back and three quarters forward of my 24. And then that'll be where this first one goes. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna nail these in, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a screw first, just because it's, uh, it's gonna be easier to put that, get it going once I'm holding it. So if I do that, and then I put this bad boy and I'm gonna flush the top, F-O-T, flush on top. Line up my marks there and I'm just going to hit that. Boom. Okay, now, next is what I need to do is I need to make sure that this is not spinning, you know what I mean? So what you can do, super easy way to do it is just to take your square and put it on like that. And I don't know if you can see that there, but you can see how it's not square. So I'm just gonna tap that to where my board is squared up. 
and then I know it's straight. And then I can take my Dewalt gun. Again, just making sure I'm going down straight with the board and not angling. So I'm gonna go straight down like this and maybe. Yep. No miss and whack. No miss. There you go. So that is my, I guess you call it outrigger. And I'm not gonna need one here because this board's gonna go out there and this board's gonna come in here and it's gonna butt and I can screw it in the outside there. So I just need to put these two foot on center all the way up and when we get to the top, we'll address up by the roof and then I need to do the other side. Another thing that I did wanna mention is that um, what a lot of people will have the tendency to do is that they'll get their first one in and then what they'll do is they'll pull their number off of that one and make a mark and then they'll put that one in and then pull their number off of that one and make a mark but the problem with that is that if this one's a little bit off that's gonna make this one even more off and if that one's a little bit off now I'm doubling my um, discrepancy and I'm keeping to pull that all the way up by the time I get to the top there's a great chance that it's not gonna be even close so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull my numbers every time off of my bottom to So I got this run on, um, but I'm not really sure how it's gonna play out here because again, my fascia is two by six, my joists are two by eight, and I don't want the fascia to sit on the roof. So it's gonna come in, you know, a long ways like this. So I'm thinking I'll probably end up putting this block somewhere like that off the deck but what I think I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to just cut one, cut the angle on it, put it up here, just not cut the length or anything, just stick it up here, move it in there and see where I'm at. And that way I'll know what I need to do there because I don't want to put this board in and have it be wrong. So I think I'm going to do that. I'll put a couple scabs underneath these to hold the board up because I won't be able to hold that by myself. So I'm just going to screw a two by four or something, I'll let it run, run long. That way I can put my fascia on top of that with the angle, I'll slide it up here, see what it's doing. And then I can put this piece on, cut it to the length and then attach. Hey, what's going on everybody? So uh, driving over to Maryville, Tennessee to pick up some shingles for my project here. Um, that's the bad thing about living in a small town is that sometimes things are not right at your fingertips like you need them. You gotta drive a couple hours to get them. But uh, fortunately for you guys, I have a fantastic deal that's right at your fingertips and you don't even have to get off the couch to get involved. So I partnered with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official betting partner of the NFL to bring all new customers and existing customers some fantastic deals. First off, let's talk about you new customers. All you gotta do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use the promo code JaysWay when you're signing up, place a $5 bet and you will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Yes, $150 in bonus bets instantly just for signing up using that promo code JaysWay. All right, let's talk about you existing customers. So if you already have a DraftKings Sportsbook account, that's fine. So what we have for you is we have a no sweat bet for you. So if you place a no sweat bet on a same game parlay or same game parlay extra, if your bet doesn't hit, you get a bonus bet back. Max reward limits do apply on that one, just so you know. You're like, but Jay, I live in a state where sports betting is not yet available. That's all right, don't worry about it. We have something for you too. It's called Daily Fantasy Sports. Uh, it's just like fantasy football. You go in, you know, you set up your lineup, you pick your running backs, pick your wide receivers, stay underneath the cap. It's a great way to get involved. Okay, so again, existing customers, we got you the no sweat bet. New customers, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. When sign up, use the promo code JaysWay, place a $5 bet and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Again, that's promo code JaysWay, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. As always, I'd like to thank DraftKings Sportsbook for uh, sponsoring today's video. And while you guys sit on the couch and download your app and have fun, uh, I guess I'm gonna finish this drive over to Tennessee to pick up my shingles. Well, I think I'm going down the tail of the dragon. Yikes! We established the problem in the last video is that I thought this was a 312, but it's not. It's actually a 212. So 212, nine degrees. 
So really, that's that 59, even though it worked up there, it's not really right. But I think because it's so long and because it's only a couple degrees, it's not a big deal. So I'm just going to keep rolling that same number. I could change it, but I want them all to match. So this is my 2x6. This is going to go up against the house. So I need it to be, or up against the garage, I need it to be like that. So I'm going to put my pivot here. I'm going to go to 59 degrees. Take that out to the end so I don't waste any material. And then I will mark that. Wow, that was awesome. Man, that was awesome. I guess I need to put some batteries on charge and get another battery. Got my piece up here. What I also did is I also cut a piece of one inch block that I'm gonna lay on the roof. That's why I don't have to try to use my tape measure to try to uh, get my distance there. I'm just gonna put this down there like that. So that'll hold that. So it's gonna go like that. And then it's gonna roll up here to probably that one inch. And as you can see, this board's really got some twisty to it, so I might have to do some finagling. But um, I'm gonna get up to where this is flush there. So probably something like that is what's gonna happen. Looks about right. That looks like something now. That looks like something. FOT. Now I don't want to shoot. Oh, I almost did it. I almost started just going to town. Zip, 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 zip. But remember, I said I'm going to take this down after I mark it. Jono, hey, can you mark that end of that board? Ray, hey, can you mark the end of that board so we know where to cut it? <laughs> yeah, funny. <laughs> no, nope, I'll get down. I'll mark it. Now I'll come back up, I'll take this off, then I'll take it back down, then I'll cut it, then I'll bring it back up, and then I'll screw it all in. have all that attached now uh, another thing i wanted to point out is that i don't have layout on this board if i would have started from down there i could have put layout on the board but i didn't i started from up here because i wanted to make sure that this was what it needed to be so what you can do since you don't have layout on the board is um you can take your square and you can just put it in there because remember this is already on layout and if i put my square in there it should be square if this thing is good so it's not so this one needs to go up the hill there actually a little bit more so that looks pretty good so i'll make a little tick mark there just in case it was to move before i got my screw in and now i know that that is squared up and so this should be 24 edge to edge so that works out good so now i can screw this one in i'll do the same thing I can actually pull off of these if I wanted to, but I will do both. I'll pull off and make sure these are square. Just uh, that microphone thing that we were doing, it's just, it's not cutting it. I tried it out down here. I tried it up here. I tried it over here. It's not working. So I'm just going to try to talk my normal, my normal sound really loud. And I think you'll be able to hear it. I'm going to put this front fascia board on. Again, I put a little board up here to hang it from. Uh, so that way I can work it by myself. So center to center on these posts is eight foot i'm adding an extra foot for my overhang so that makes nine foot i got 10 footers so i'm just going to cut a 10 i'm not going to cut anything i'm just going to use a 10 footer but one thing i did want to say is that when you're working with any material from uh from like lowe's or home depot or anything like that always check the ends because there's tons of times when the end is not square as you can see right there that one is not square so I want to make sure that my where my two boards butt together, 
that that's a straight cut and it goes together nice. There is going to be a, another fascia on this, but that's just common practice just to make sure that everything looks good and that they're butted together nice. Now, before I put this board up, I can pull layout. And now these joist ends, rafter ends should not be bad, but they could be whipped. And even if the board has a big wank in it, it could make that end, even though it's nailed and screwed and lagged, it could make it kind of go out. So I'm going to put layout on my board here so that I make sure that when it goes up, it goes up right. So I'm hooking there, which will be the center of this one here. Okay. So I'm going to go center and I'm going to go two foot on center. So I'm just going to go two foot, three quarters back, three quarters back. Boom, 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 boom. And then when I get to the end one, it's only going to be a foot out. So my last one will just be a foot out. That's for my overhang. And that way, I'm starting to sound like a contractor here. Okay, another thing I want to mention is this, is that when you put this board on, your fascia board on, you do not want to put your fascia board flush to the top. Because then what is going to happen is that when your plywood comes down, we don't say plywood, your OSB zip system, which I believe I'm going to use, is that when this comes down, if that was flush like that, that would come down and it would terminate there. So what we want to do is we want to have this in plane like that. Now there is a board there, but that's what we're looking for because we want that plywood, that OSB, can't say plywood, we want that OSB to come down just like that flush on there. So I'm going to center this one up because that's where it belongs. I'm going to take my square and make sure that I'm in plane, P-L-A-N-E, and I'm going to hit it. Voila! All right, these last couple boards are playing havoc on me. Um, they're super wavy, and as you can see, like this one, it's not even close to lining up to where it needs to be, and it's not so much that it's over that far, it's just because it's leaned that far, so it needs to lean back. So, and I was trying to have to pick it up, which was a pain too. So what I did is I took this piece of blocking, and I screwed it down to my joist, and then I screwed it down to this to pick it up. And it's a little bit short, but that's all right. But that's just to get this one picked up so I can fix this one. And then once that one's done, I'll come over and fix this one. But I think this is good. And that's my plane. That's like my plywood being on it. That's a, kind of an idea of what it's going to look like. So that gets me to the, my right height. And then I'll just fix the left and right. I'm going to just cut this one in half. Now remember, I need to split this one because it needs to catch the other one going down that way too. So I'm just going to eyeball center here and make a mark. As you can see, I did put one screw in to hold it, but I did put it off to the side so that it wouldn't be in my way. And then also what we're going to do is we're going to set the depth on the saw. I'll take the, I always like to take the battery out just because I don't like to um, be cutting anything with the blade in there, with the battery in there. So I'm just gonna feel with my fingers on the back side to where I'm just cutting through my material because I don't wanna cut into my support there. And then I'll just zip that up. I'm up to cut this end off and I looked at this I was like wow wait a second and you probably can't even tell how bad it is but it is so crooked I was like wait did I do something wrong but then I looked over at this Joyce wow <laughs> that's why so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to try to find a straight Joyce and maybe put some blocking in or 
just when I put my sheathing on, obviously I need to make sure that everything is straight before I nail everything down because that is not going to work. That's gotta get sucked in like an inch at least, if not more. Wow, is that bent. <laughs> Now, what do I do here? Let me get down bird's eye view on this thing. See how all these, see how the two by eights are going long now up here. I'm gonna put my level on there, level that up. So that's gotta come off. Yoop. Hmm. What do you think? Maybe a saw's off from underneath, or maybe the buzz saw. What's the chances I cut that flat though? I don't know. Let's give it a whirl. Uh -huh. Looks pretty good. Now is it right? That's the next question. I hate to complain, but I'll tell you what, that sucked. I think that was the worst part. Just cutting all those off. And I don't even know if it's right, because that fascia board comes down like that, and then those aren't the same. But I'm not putting any soffit in it, so it doesn't... I don't think it matters as long as I just didn't want those ends of those two by eights hanging down. Oh, Stephanie. So um, I think that's good, but I'm done for today, man. I'm spent. I got to get this place cleaned up and then hopefully tomorrow I can get the wife muscles to put a little surprise up on that roof that we got. She don't even know about it. I don't think. Hey, Hi. hey. I was just saying how much I was looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Let me guess. My schedule came out? No, your muscles. Because <laughs> uh, we got to get something, a little secret that's underneath that plastic on top of that. <laughs> but I have an idea. Big brain on Brad. I can't ruin it, but I'll show you tomorrow. All right, so you need to get a good night's sleep because those sheets are heavy. Yeah. Morning. It's freezing out here. Um, but I don't know if you saw this, but I did get a delivery the other day. And uh, I think I know what it is. And I don't know if you guys know what it is or not, but let's take a look at what it is. Boom. Zip system. Water resistive air barrier protection this is what's going on the roof and i'm sure you've seen the perkins use it maybe you haven't but this stuff is fantastic all you do is you put it up there nail it down and then we have our zip tape roll the tape we're going to roll all of our seams and it's good it's done it's water resistant at that point no water's getting in and i can put my shingles right over the top of that so a huge shout out to huber uh, for hooking me up with this uh, zip system roofing uh, huber chris appreciate you bub and um, let's get this stuff up there. I want to get up there because I want to put the TL up there. Choo, choo, choo. That's the shot putting this roof on. So I need to somehow get up there to put the TL there. Let's do that too. Man, I got all kinds of ideas this morning.
got our first sheet in and uh oh i guess it looks good but one thing we do want to look at here is and i think i mentioned this is that all these joists are definitely not straight so what we're going to do is sorry the gopro's dead but i would use that but what we're going to do is we're going to pull numbers and make sure that these are centered and the good thing about this zip board system um, is that it comes with markers there so you know where to shoot so squares are my 24 on center so once i get the ends lined up then i'll go back and just hit the field pop 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 and i am using 16s which i don't think that's necessary i believe eights would be sufficient because there's no foam on the back of this zip board but that's all i have and i actually have some galvies left over from when i did the pole barn so i'm going to use those up as well because nails are super expensive I didn't steal any from Jamie, so I have to use my own. So uh, we're just going to start pegging along. So I got a full sheet here. I'll do a little piece cut out there. I'll do another piece there. And then what I'll do here is I will overlap my joints. I don't want to put another full sheet here so the joints all line up. I want them to stagger um, to be more sturdibility on this thing. So at this point now, I think my truck system here worked awesome. I mean, I just leaned that thing up there and pushed her up and it worked good. So I am going to have a lot of up and down, but um, I think it's going to work out great. Charlie, get out of my truck. What are you doing? Get. All right. We're going to knock this out to park, Rick. Is that a word? Song? I don't know. Okay, ran into a small problem here. You can see that this outside joist is way off. I'm flush here at the bottom. And as it goes up, it's way whipped out. So I need to get that over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these bar clamps. I didn't even know I had it. And I have this joist secure, which I know is straight because it's on my mark and I weighed it out. So that one is straight, but these are not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hook onto this one since that's all attached. I haven't shot any nails in here yet. I'm just gonna hook on this one and yank it over to where it's flush and then I'm going to shoot it. Okay, now I got those rips. Um, I called Eric because I didn't know if uh, the, this uh, zip board should touch the roof. But he said it doesn't really matter because, again, I'm going to put some flashing and shingles all up in it. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run my tape down my joist there till it hits there. It's like 20 and 3 16 but, I mean, I don't want to have to have it up off of this. So I think 20 is going to be sufficient. Again here. Yeah, it's like 20 and an eighth or so, which is pretty good. I'm happy how consistent it is across the board i mean i'm within like a a quarter not even i'm in within like an eighth the whole way down now i do have a bunch of crap in there that i probably don't want that to stay there so i'm gonna grab my dewalt blower this thing is great man i'll tell you what you put a brick in that thing and this thing is so powerful 20 volt dewalt super nice i have been doing so good with minimizing my material waste, and I just made a big mistake. I need these rips up there, and I need an eight footer, and I need a seven footer. So what I should have done, I should have ripped my 20 inches off of my eight footer, then ripped 20 inches off the other side of it, and then cut it to seven foot. But what did I just do like an idiot? I just cut this whole sheet to seven feet. <laughs> now I don't have it to use on the other side so now i have to rip another whole sheet 20 inches off so ah all right well it is what it is but that sucks anyways here we go Woo! i'm gonna do some break dancing up here ready for some zip watch me zip watch me nay nay watch me zip zip watch me nay nay Alrighty, time to roll the tape. This stuff is phenomenal. 
If you've never used zip tape before, it works on everything. You can fix anything with zip tape. So I'm gonna do all the verticals first. And the reason why I want to do that is because, oh gosh, see like that? Once it sticks to itself, oh my gosh. It's almost impossible to get off. I saved myself. All right, so I'm gonna go there. I'll cut that excess off, but I'm gonna do the verticals first. And the reason why is now I can run one long one all the way across there. Man, does that look awesome? Except for that. I'm short by like six feet of tape. <laughs> but whatever. But you know what the beauty of this zip system is? Is that this thing is ready for shingles. I don't have to put any tar paper. I don't have to put any underlayment. I gotta put nothing down. This has already got the protective on it. It's got the zip to seal up the seams. So I'm good to go. Shingles. Do -do 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 -do. That's it. Now obviously I gotta do some... Um, another piece of uh, final fascia on the outside and I got to do some drip edge and then I got to figure out what's going on here obviously I need to get some flashing that's probably gonna roll up under this layer of shingles right here whoop up to there and then put the shingles up there uh, again I gotta probably talk to the boss JMO to see what I should do exactly there just to make sure nothing's leaking but that's fantastic so that's awesome that's a day I think I did this whole thing in probably like three hours by myself. Super easy, go down, shoot it, tape it, it's awesome. Again, Huber, thank you very much for the hookup. One person commented on that I had forgotten to put my other band board on and you can see it's not super tight there and I think that's because the angle is a little bit off. But I was just so excited to get the sheathing on that I totally forgot to put that second band board on. But what I did is I actually, you can see, is I had that other two by eight. So I actually used that as the other band board there and I stuck it up in there. Uh, that's a good thing. The bad thing is that I can't screw down into the sheathing of my old roof to secure it good enough. I can screw this way into from my rafters into that band board fine but i don't have any way to secure it to the deck well i do and this is how i'm going to do it so this is how i'm going to do it i got this big alley lock and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through the sheathing through the rafter through the band board and into the roof and into the uh sheathing of the roof and i think that will if i put three or four of these in there it ain't going anywhere. And again, that uh, other band board I have is super secure. Remember, I went back and I put Ollie locks and all of those. So that thing's not going anywhere. So this will just make me feel good that that other band board's not going to go anywhere or anything. So uh, I did a little bit of calculations. I think I want to be about maybe about 13 inches down. And I know I'm only going to an inch and a half and I can't see it. But by my layout on my sheathing, I'm going to go something about here. Let's see what happens. Alrighty, man. That one hit home. I don't see the screw sticking out the sides anywhere. It sucked the band board up super tight to the rafter. And even sucked it down to the roof a little bit, so... I'm super stoked on that one. I think that's going great. Just realized too that I probably don't need these anymore. These stepper things, these are useless now. So I'll get rid of those. I'll uh, get me some extra screws. All right, that is a wrap on today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. And uh, if you're not subscribed, do me a favor, just hit that subscribe button. It just takes a second. It helps me out huge. The more people like the videos and are subscribed, the more YouTube um, recommends. That's the word I was looking for. I was like totally blank. Recommends the videos. 
Um, so that helps me out huge. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit that like button, hit the bell, get notifications uh, when new videos come out. So again, thank you so much everybody for watching today and we'll catch you on the next one. All right, boating season is over, which sucks, but we still have some exciting things going on with the boat. I'm here with Sue with Performance Marine. Performance Marine and she does deck it flooring for our boat. And she's almost done, and I don't even know if I want to look at it yet, but I think I do because I'm so excited. I can't wait till Stephanie sees it. So let's check it out. What? Look at that, dude. Nice. Does that look good? And that's Joe? Joe. Joe, yeah. Hey, Joe. So Joe and Sue here are putting in this awesome deck at flooring. And Sue, where do you work? Like uh, Western North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia? How far you go? Okay, so if you're in the market for some flooring and you're within three hours of Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, shoot me a link and I will get you Sue's information. She does a fantastic job. They come out with a computer and they put everything and they make it perfect and it looks freaking awesome. I'm so stoked and I cannot wait for Stephanie to see it. So guys, thank you very much. Good job. Thank you. Awesome. Fancy. <laughs>